Hey together, this is my review of the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Before jumping deeper into the video, I just want to quickly talk about the backstory of this printer. If you have already seen my other video, you probably can skip this part and go um, to my review. But for all of you who haven't seen that, this printer was lent to me by a friend. The story is that I wanted to buy a similar printer because I was in need of a bigger printer because my Prusas have a small build room, I would say. And I was looking for a 300 by 300 by 400 machine. And I was not sure if I should go for a Sidewinder or for a CR10 or for another machine. So I knew that uh, this guy had this machine and I just wanted to ask about his experience. And yeah, that was in October 2020. And he bought the machine in late of 2019. So. He wasn't printing at all. He said, yeah, the printer is standing around in my room because I couldn't get it to print. So I made a deal that I will fix the machine, improve it, put up a Lysa profile and give it back to him so he can start printing and enjoy printing because he was a beginner in this field. Turns out that I had to replace the bed and the rollers because the bed was wobbling and we were good to go uh, to print. So this machine was not sponsored, it was not provided for the purpose of a review by any party which is involved with artillery and I even didn't buy this machine myself, so I have no affiliation in saying that this is a good machine or a bad machine. Now that this is out of the way, let's jump into the facts about the machine. The machine has a 300 by 300 by 400 build volume, it has double lead screws which are synchronized through a belt on top it has a glass bed, it has manual bed leveling, so no outer bed level, no probe there, just a CM stop on the right side and the bed is powered with mains voltage, so it heats up really quickly. It has a touch screen, the USB port is on the front, which is pretty cool and besides that, I would say there are no special features except to, worth mentioning that it's a direct drive extruder. After fixing the first issue about this printer, I directly started upgrading some parts. Here I want to highlight a very good website. If you have a artillery printer, the Sidewinder or the Genius, go to 3dbeginner.com. I hope that was correct. I will link it in the description below. And there is a full guide on calibrating, on upgrading and about potential issues and replacement parts. I directly upgraded this spool holder because the original spool holder isn't practical at all. If you want to move the left and or the right side you have to unscrew four screws in total and then you can move the spool holder to compensate if you have a smaller or a bigger spool which isn't practical at all. So I printed these rollers on top and now the spool can just be placed on top and it rolls perfectly smooth which is just a practical really good feature. Besides that I upgraded the fan shroud because the original fan shroud only had one exhaust. This version only uh, this version has two exhausts. I saw that there are also some with a ring exhaust which probably is even better but this served me really well. Another key upgrade is you have to print a cable strain relief for your bed. The bed cables are simply attached to um, the silicon heat pad which is yeah, glued to um, the build surface and there's no strain relief so there's stress on the wires which probably wouldn't be good in the future if you start printing for many many hours. At some point these connections might break and cause some serious issues. One issue which I really found quite funny because I couldn't wrap my head around that is that there's a stock 
either on this printer, on this version, this is the 2019 version, if you want to see a review of a current machine, I can highlight Tom's uh, review, which I will also link in the description, besides other reviews from these old machines. As said, I found this funny because on the blog from Free the Beginner there was the wording your your idler, I think it's the idler, it will break at some point. It's not a question if it will break, it's the question when. I was thinking like, okay, my machine is stock, I cannot think about this part simply breaking, it's a plastic piece, if you use the right material it won't break at all and after a couple of days it actually snapped. It just broke in two pieces, the string, it flew out. I was really stoked about that because I wasn't really thinking that such a thing can happen, that you create something and so fast it will break. It's just really bad engineering in my opinion. Wrong material or wrong design. Another upgrade which I didn't make myself but which I would highly recommend is more stability on the z-axis. You can place printed parts and rods on there to stabilize the z-axis because if you have mass on there and print high pieces this gantry actually yeah it's really wobbly and it will in my opinion result in worse print quality the higher you will go. So as we now have covered the technical side let's talk about prints and print results on this printer. As you can see I printed a variation of colors and filaments. I mainly used PLA, PLA plus and PETG. PLA was mainly from dust filament as well as PETG and then I had ESAN PETG and ESAN PLA plus. You would now say okay ESAN is more like a cheap filament. Yes that's true but I really like the filament because I have really clean and good results on my process and that's why I used these filaments. I printed a lot of stuff. For example, I printed four of these Valorant Prime Axes and these came out quite nice, I would say. They are not perfect. This was in the beginning where I was still tuning the profiles. You can see some ringing, you can see some stringing and that's about it. Another thing I will talk later about. I also printed this retractable sword um, with PLA from Protopasta, which smells like a good coffee, which is quite nice. Um, the print is, I would say, it's near perfect. Um, there's just also a small issue, which I will cover later, the same thing as on the Valorant X. Besides that, I would say I printed the usual stuff. I printed these temp towers for calibration. I printed a lot of banshees. Um, one banshee I want to highlight is this beautiful spaghetti banshee, which was kind of my uh, failure because I'm really used to having auto bad leveling. This printer doesn't have that. So from time to time, I would say every fourth print, you kind of have to re-level the bed to get a perfect first layer and I'm just not used to it because of my probes which are on the Mark III. Yeah, all in all I achieved some, I would say, amazing results. The printer is really capable of printing really good. I set up a profile in Prusa Slicer. I also tried out Cura with the stock profile but I think it wasn't really good and I'm mainly using only Prusa Slicer, so it's not really hard to, to translate these parameters into Prusa Slicer from Cura, which I did. And I made some quite nice prints like this Banshee in PTG, which I would consider nearly perfect except for some strings on the PTG. PTG is a really stringy material, but these strings are super thin and you can easily remove them. So. This for me personally is not an issue. If we take a look at this Deadpool bust from Eastman, the quality of this print is overall really good. There's almost no visible layer lines. This was printed in dust filament PLA, as said with 0.16 millimeter layers. 
but it has an apparent issue with under extrusions. And that's not the only print. The Mandalorian which I printed without any supports, overall really good print quality, but you have under extrusions. As said, the Valorant Prime X, good print, under extrusions. You also have under extrusions on Banshees. However, such a print like this, this is a handle for an upcoming uh, sword I'm making, which will be 1.5 meters long. It's called Swihander. Um, was printed in PETG and there was no issue with any under extrusions, just some wobbling because it has a really small footprint and yeah, I can understand that this print will move a little bit. So I found out that retraction, in my opinion, was an issue with this printer. I was using from 0.8 mm to 3 mm and tried different things. Also with speeds from 35 mm per second to 60 mm per second. I changed temperatures. I just couldn't resolve this issue. By the way, the stock settings from Cura are 3 mm for this direct drive, which I don't really understand. Maybe it's a super old profile on the original Arturoli website. I just couldn't understand that. For me, I think this is a really high value. More around 1 mm is something I would do on a direct drive extruder. So I took apart the extruder and found a couple of interesting stuff. So uh, I don't know where to start right now. First, I took apart the right side of uh, the extruder just because I wanted to see what is on there. And yeah, what I there discovered is really devastating. Um, I found this connector which looked almost burnt. Um, this connector is connected to, to the heater cartridge which is inside the heat block. So that's the thing where usually at some point will start a magic smoke and some fire possibly. Um, just a full disclaimer, I'm not an electrician so I cannot tell the issue why this one looks that way. I just know that this is not a good sign, that there's heat inside this connector, that's why the plastic looks brownish and will eventually melt or catch fire at some point. So this is a real security safety issue and a big concern from my side of this printer. In my opinion this doesn't resolve the mystery about these extrusion issues. But then I was disassembling the left side again, which I already did before because I had to replace this idler. And I discovered a really weird thing, which I think resolves the question why there were issues. So you have these two gears on the extruder and I was experiencing a force resistance when turning this by hand. And when I took this apart, I think I found the issue that the extruder gear is actually grinding on this small plastic piece, which is on top on the PTFE liner, which is inside the hot end. So the gears could actually catch on this plastic piece. And I think for a short period of time, the, the, the force wouldn't be high enough to compensate against it because this is an actual gear and there's another gear on the shaft motor. And that's why you had these under extrusions, but after a short period, the under extrusion would catch up and you would see a clear and normal filament extrusion. This is my explanation. I cannot prove that at some point. I just uh, can prove that there's abrasion on the bearings and that there's play actually in these bearings where this gear is actually held. On top of that I found this really weird gooey stuff which is inside uh, or underneath this plastic part and I don't really know what kind of stuff that is and maybe it's from the coffee brown protopasta filament so I cannot see if this is an, an issue for that. As said, I think the gear was grinding on the plastic piece and therefore I had these under If you have different theory, if you have this printer and experience a similar thing, 
I would be really glad if you leave your opinion or your hints in the description below. But at that point, I was really frustrated with this printer and all I can recommend because of this safety issue to replace the whole hot end. I have seen that you can buy a replacement part for 39 euros, which is like insanely cheap for such a machine. And that would give me a good feeling that somehow could continue print on this printer. So what is my final conclusion about this printer and about my experience with this printer? Well, it's, it's difficult, it's hard. And the first point, I'm just disappointed. My hopes because of other reviews of the community of pictures and prints which I have seen were really high. I thought this machine is capable of good prints and yeah, it can prove that good prints can come out of, out of this machine, but there were just too many issues. You have to look at it that way. A beginner was buying this machine because of good reviews, because of potentially good prints, maybe good marketing, I don't know, and he couldn't even get it to print. Uh, so someone spent 400 euros on this and was not happy about that. After these two issues, you have more issues. There are some, I would say, bad design choices about that. First of all, as said, the filament holder, the spool holder is not really practical, but you can look over that. That's not a big issue. But on this printer, there are two main safety issues, which is first, there's no strain relief from the stock version. And even if this is the first iteration, this is more also like an industry standard. All other machines probably are using this. And if it's a copy from a good machine, if you copy the iFreestyle, you can also copy, in my opinion, the good parts. Not only the parts you can produce cheap and put out a machine which is a good platform, but actually a good printer, which is more important to me personally. And the second issue is on this machine, this connector, which potentially, I say potentially because I don't know that for sure and I don't want to test that, can cause severe issues if you leave the machine unattended for a couple of, I don't know, 10, 100 hours more. If you have seen Tom's review about the current version, he highlights all the electronics and I will not cover this part because I'm not an expert on this. I don't have the feeling I can judge on that. He can, so watch it and learn something from that. There's one point which is really interesting on this machine. He highlights that on the new version, the wrapping around the bed cable is kind of unflexible, more stiff, and it kinks in certain spots, which will lead to severe issues at some point because these cables can break. Fortunately, this machine doesn't have this issue. There's like a rubber coating around the cables and this bends in a perfect loop. And I find it kind of interesting that they even downgraded this stuff probably due to shortage of, shortage of material, maybe even due to cost, I don't know. So, final conclusion, no more talking now. I cannot recommend this machine for a beginner. Someone who wants to buy his first printer, in my opinion, he should not buy this iteration, this first iteration of the Sidewinder. I know, as said, that there are new versions like the V4 about this printer on the market, it could look different. And also it could look different on further iterations of this machine. It could look different on the Atelier Genius. I just want to say that this one is not a machine for a beginner. If you are experienced, this is, and this is the wording, which also 3D printing nerd used in his review. And I found this actually quite soothing for this machine. It is a platform. It is a good platform. For this price, you will have to and want to upgrade the machine to further increase the print quality, to increase reliability and increase safety. But for that, it's a good machine. So the decision is up to you. Do you want to spend 400, 450 euros on a platform to further improve it? Or do you want to spend a lot more and buy a more expensive machine but have 
probably reliability and more safety. These are the two approaches. In my opinion, I want reliability and I want safety and I want ease of use. I want to throw prints on it and it should print. I'm not anymore on this point where I want to tinker with such a machine, but I know there's a huge community who wants to do that. And then this is a potentially suitable machine for you. So I think I have talked everything too. So I think I have talked everything through. I even made some bullet points because this video was really long, I know. I had much to talk about. I wanted to clarify every point. I wanted to prove every point and I just wanted to talk out of my mind any loose stuff and forget about anything which I found on this printer. As said before, build your own opinion, check out other reviews like Tom, Maker's Muse, 3D Printing Nerd, Breaks and Makes, former 3D Maker Noob. Build your own opinion, check which version you want to buy. As said, this is an old version. I made this review because I wanted to share my experience about a cheap machine with a big build volume because I was looking for a big printer and I just couldn't decide. For me personally, my decision is kind of clear now. If you stick until the end, then it's really cool. <laughs> Leave your comment in the comment section below how you found this video. Leave a like if you liked it. And that's for it for today. I want to thank you for watching and have a nice day and goodbye.